Yeah, absolutely over the moon. Um, I think it's, you know, today is about probably 18 months of hard work and thinking and consultation all coming together and being able to share everything um, in, all its, in all its glory. Um, I think, you know, probably hit me this morning uh, doing a f those first few interviews that it's all real now. Um, and the launch today, I think, has been a really, a really lovely coming together of lots of different people who um, are excited about the direction of travel and the opportunity ahead of us. You know, it's 20 million over the next couple of years, hopefully 50 million over the five-year period of the strategy. And that's, you know, that is a game-changing level of investment in women's sport or in anything. And so uh, I suppose now it's the challenge is to deliver that. Well, for a long while, we were thinking that we would have a higher number of semi-pro players. Um, and then just as thinking evolves and as, as meetings develop, um, it struck us that actually for the, um, to, to have a core group of players who are paid to be full-time professional cricketers, um, to drive the performance standards in that domestic, those new domestic competitions at 50 over and T20 cricket, um, and to push uh, the current England centrally contracted group, we just felt that that was more powerful. I think we were also quite realistic about our current talent pool size. Um, and whilst you know everyone uh, playing in those domestic competitions um, will be training very, very hard, um, they won't all be year-round cricketers. They will be playing summer-only months of white ball cricket. And I think we felt that it was better to reward a fewer number of players uh, with greater rewards. That's not, so all of the other players playing in the competitions will still be paid, but they won't be paid a full-time salary. So they will be paid on a match fee basis. So everyone playing in the competitions will be being remunerated, but with a core group of, uh, of players who, who we will identify with the new eight regions um, are, the, are the most likely players to push for England places over the next few years. It's absolutely that, and I think probably in my time at the ECB, I've seen huge investments going into the elite end, or relatively huge investment going into the elite end. We introduced central contracts for the first time for England women five years ago. We built the Kia Super League over a, the last five years, and that's obviously uh, came, to, came to a conclusion this year. So we've, 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 we've invested uh, well into the performance end of the women's game, and I think it's now is absolutely about recognizing that this strategy is about inspiring young people. It's about getting bats and balls into more young people's hands. And it's, it's from a gender balance point of view, it's about telling girls and showing girls and making them believe that cricket is just as, just as much a sport for girls as it is for boys. Yeah, but at least we had, at least we had it, you know, we had the answer. Uh, I think what would have been um, even more deflating would have been the Ashes defeat with no um, kind of uh, significant uh, plan um, to address that. Um, so uh, the Women's Ashes, I think, you know, was revealing, it revealed a lot of things to us. Um, and, you know, I, I'm confident now that with this plan, you know, obviously there are short, medium and long term things that can be achieved through the plan. But certainly we, in terms of our performance structure and the number of pay players paid to play, we are closing the gap with Australia. Um, they've done a remarkable job over the last four or five years. Um, and uh, whilst it was disappointing, whilst the Ashes was disappointing, I was optimistic about what we're doing next because I knew that the plan was, you know, only a few months away from being launched. We are, um, we've received a good, uh, a good pool of applicants. Uh, we've started to create a long list and we've had initial conversations with several uh, candidates on that long list. Um, and we will get to a short list of probably three or four ready to interview during the middle of next week. Um, and that the new candidate, the successful candidate will start in January, uh, ready to go to Australia for the T20 World Cup. And Alastair Maiden, uh, our current assistant coach will definitely lead the side until Christmas. Um, and I suppose a question that you might be about to ask, so I might preempt it, is that we do have, uh, we do have women on that, uh, on that list. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's in a way it doesn't bother me that there's criticism and um, some disgruntled voices out there about pay because it shows people care and it shows that we've got momentum behind uh, women's cricket and, and female players. So, you know, I'm comfortable that, as you say, you know, those 40 domestic contracts 
plus the 100 uh, salaries, plus prize money, plus the England Women's Central contracts, which are going up year on year. Um, I think we're, you know, we're starting to create a good career option and a good package for more and more women in the game. And, and the key thing is that we keep pressing, you know, pressing for more progress in that area. Claire Connor, a huge day for you and for England Women's Cricket. Thanks for joining Women's Cricket Zone. Thank you.